Hello, welcome to lesson 2 of our Shopify GA4 crash course. In this video, we will review Shopify GA4 integration methods, specifically Google Sales Channel app, also known as the native integration. We will check the pros and cons of Google Sales app, how you could integrate with that, and also the alternative integration options. Now, as you might experience already, there isn't any one-click integration options just like in the past. In the past, you know, for Universal Analytics, we would just type the Universal Analytics tracking ID, save through the settings preferences, and then it would work. And now we have to use an app. And as you can see here in this yellow background, uh, Google Analytics for Google's up updated measurement platform is available through the Google Channel app. Google Sales Channel, also known as. Some merchants don't like to use it for many reasons. And also it has some downsides, which, we will, which I will walk you through now. And then we will quickly do the integration together as well. But now let's have a look at what are the pros and cons using Google Sales Channel app. First of all, of course, it's a very easy in installation and integration process. I guess it would just take three or four minutes maximum for you to connect with your GA4 account and your Shopify store. And it covers standard GA4 e-commerce events, which is also great. You have view item, add to cart, purchase, um, and a couple more standard e-com events. And obviously it's, it's an official solution, which is uh, done by Shopify and Google combined. So these are the pros, but now let's talk about cons as well. Shopify or Google doesn't provide the direct support to this. So if you have any issues, if it doesn't work for you, then you will not be able to get a support. More importantly, there are many missing GA4 e-commerce events or parameters, which we will review in the next slide more in depth. There is no customization option. So in case you want to customize um, the GA4 integration, you won't be able to do that. Um, and there is no solution to store level tracking issues. Let's say you are using a multi-currency app and your currencies are uh, transformed to GA4 wrongly. Unfortunately, you will not be able to fix that problem because it's a black box and you can only turn it on and turn it off. You cannot do any customizations within. We have also been reported some accuracy issues, such as merchants who are using Analyzify and Google Sales Channel together realize that Google Sales Channel actually records less sales than Analyzify or other professional integration methods. But this can happen uh, for different reasons, so that's why I did not include it here. I would like to mention though that at the moment it is 11th June 2023 that I'm recording this video. This information is provided based on the data that we have at the moment um, and Google Sales Channel might be updated and maybe by the time you are watching this video they might solve some of these cons that's why i would strongly recommend you to view our website relevant page analyzify.com slash ga4 and in that page we always try to keep the most up-to-date information for instance at the moment if you go that you will find all the details how Google Sales Channel app works, how it works compared to Analyzify, and then we also have a table which compares in depth uh, Google Sales Channel and our solution and also other solutions. And so I would like to mention one more time that these things change. So in the beginning there were more problems, now there are less problems. So I, would, I don't want you to have a wrong impression. So by the time you are watching this video, make sure to check our website for the most up-to-date information. Now I will jump into cons um, and especially for the missing events, missing e-com events. So let's quickly have a look. What, does, what do I mean with missing e-com events? View item list. This is when you view a collection page, um, we know which collection it is. And then if a user clicks a product to that, to that collection, it is the select item event. So these two, uh, the native integration doesn't have at the moment. View cart event is also not included. So when somebody views the cart, that data is not being sent to GA4. That means you will not have some of the cart level reports. Remove from cart event is not included. Um, this is pretty important event because we always track add to cart event, but remove from cart event probably is also very important. So we would like to track that actually, but that's not covered at the moment. Add shipping info and refunds are also not covered. So these are the events only, the situation. And now let's check the parameters or the data within the events. Uh, I guess the most important ones are coupon codes, obviously in the purchase event. So if you are running campaigns based on coupon codes, now these coupon codes are not sent to GA4. So you will not be able to get coupon level reports in GA4. Customer ID, user ID, um, is not also being sent. Customer ID is really important because GA4 has 
Google Signals. Google Signals help with cross device tracking. So when we send the customer ID and when we define the customer, then Google Analytics 4 is able to identify the same customer which are using different devices. Um, so that's, that is unfortunately is not included as well. SKUs are important for some merchants that we also did not see. Purchase doesn't work on upsell pages or works with the wrong revenue number. Also, we have identified some multi-currency issues in multi-stores. Some stores that use multi-currency, their reports weren't clearly visible in the uh, native integration. Checkout steps, only begin checkout was included by the time we checked. So some of the important checkout steps, some as ad shipping info, ad payment info, were not included. Once again, this might be changed now. So please make sure to check our website for the most up-to-date information. So this was about uh, native GA4 uh, integrations, pros and cons. If you, are, if you need a basic tracking, if you don't spend so much on ads, if you are not using analytics very often, then probably you will be good with the Shopify native integration. But if you spend on ads much, if you check the reports, if the reporting is important for you, then you might need a more professional solution for more granular data. In that case, I would strongly recommend you to use other integration options. So you can choose Analyzify or another app for a complete GA4 integration. Sometimes I know there are some professionals, freelancers, offer some services to do integrations for you. If you will hire one of those professionals, please ensure and learn which integration methods they will use. If they will implement a code, if they will use Google Tag Manager, if they will use an app, because if you don't know how your store is integrated with GA4, then you will also have hard time finding problems if there are, when there are problems. So that's something which I would like to warn you. Um, and last thing that the server-side integrations options, I will be covering that in our complete GA4 course. Uh, at the moment, I want to keep this pretty plain and simple, so I don't want to dive into the server-side integration details. So now I will show you how to set up GA4 using Google Sales Channel. It's pretty straightforward and fast process, so let's get into that. I will be moving here fast because it's pretty straightforward process. I just came into Shopify Admin Online Store Preferences and then I came into Google Analytics section. Here we see this warning of um, orange background, manage pixel here. When I click into that, it led me to Google Sales Channel app. I did not have Google Sales Channel app at the time on my uh, store because this is just a demo store I created. So I added the Sales Channel first. But in case you have the Sales Channel, you will see a very similar screen like this. My Google account wasn't connected, so now I am connecting my Google account quickly. Um, when I connect my Google account, then it will uh, ask my permission. Then it will immediately ask the property that I want to connect this store with. Here what you should be careful probably is that if you are already integrated with GA4, either using an app or using Shopify GA4 Kit, our open source solution, um, you shouldn't choose the same property. You should choose a different property. Either you should turn off the previous integration or you should choose a different property here. Otherwise, it will count twice. It will cause double counting. So that's what I did. I just went ahead and created a new property actually and then connected this native integration with the new property. So, um, and in this way, I will also quickly walk you through how to create a new property quickly in GA4. Again, it's pretty straightforward. I already have an account here. So I'll just go into admin section and then in the admin, in the middle, I have a column called property and then I will click create property. I will name the property as I wish. Um, this setting is so important because if you don't choose your country, time zone and the currency well, then your e-commerce reports will be interrupted or not work properly. So make sure to choose them properly before you move into this section. These answers are actually not important. You just answer them if you wish and then move into the next step. Uh, and here Google asks us to choose what we want to do with this property. According to your choice here, your reports will be shaped. Obviously we have to choose drive online sales and move on. That's what I did. And then Again, it's a little bit more complex than Universal Analytics, right? So in Universal Analytics, you would just create property and it would give you the ID. But now here, we created the property and now we need to create a stream. So 
Obviously this is a web platform so I choose web and then move creating a stream. Here it will ask a URL and then stream name. One property can have multiple streams. It's a little bit complex so I don't want to dive into that but I will make sure to explain streams and their use cases on our complete Shopify GA4 course. So you just type the stream name. I copy the URL simply and then I write the stream name the same way as uh, the URL's first section and then I created the stream. Once I have the stream, I also have the measurement ID. This measurement ID will be used in the tracking but if when you are using Google Sales Channel app, you do not actually need the measurement ID because in Google Sales Channel app there will be a drop down and you will be able to choose from the properties. So you will see the property name and also the ID, which is happening now. Um, so as you can see here, I have lots of there, but I finally found the correct one and chose. Once I chose the property and I hit connect, then this property will be connected to this specific store. And you see the success message already. You have successfully set up Google Analytics 4. That means now from this store, the events will be going into GA4 properly. Um, let's do that. I have also done that test for you so that you can also test your integration yourself. Here you will see a warning data collection pending. What you should do, you should just go ahead and visit your store so that you will remove this warning from here. This migration, we will talk about it in the next lesson, so I'll just skip it for now. I will just go to reports and then I will click real time here. And now I will wait for my visit to be visible. I refresh the page and then I also use this plugin called Google Tag Assistant Legacy. It's actually an old plugin, as you can see, it's a legacy plugin, but I still like it. We will have a lesson for troubleshooting. I will walk you through this plugin and other troubleshooting methods in depth in that lesson. So now I will quickly show you how I enabled it and the G tag is there with the correct ID, but I still don't see here the user in the real-time report. The reason is I am using an ad blocker. So when I turn off my ad blocker for this specific store, then my real-time users will start coming. I specifically wanted to show you this use case because I know many of you are using ad blocker and then you still try to do check this and then maybe you don't relate these two topics with each other. So I just wanted to show you that the users were shown as zero and then I disabled the ad blocker and now it is one. Unfortunately, this also causes that your clients are also using ad blockers. So your data is also interrupted just like this. That's why you don't see all your sales and all your metrics matching with Shopify Analytics with Google Analytics. This is one of the reasons. I just wanted to cover that case too. So now we have the user and as you can see, some of the e-commerce events are already coming in. Now I will go back click a product, click add to cart, click view cart, and probably I will see the event name add to cart visible here with the relevant data in it. As you can see here, the native integrations first pro works properly with these events. See you in the next video where we will troubleshoot your existing setup in depth.